Warning, this content may be upsetting or disturbing to some audiences. Face and head stomped on so hard until it just <laughs> Former convicts have read it, what did happen to pedophiles in prison? I was in jail last year for drug charges. They put a convicted groper into our unit because the regular sexual charge unit was full or something. Anyways, I paid someone two soups to grope him. We were all watching TV when I hear my nig call my name behind me. He was standing right behind the groper, and reached around him and squeezed the hell out of his fat tits. This dude jumped out of his seat and everyone laughed. Best soups I ever spent. Spent 10 months in the Texas prison system for manslaughter. My first offense, and it was an accident, which is why it was a short sentence. They were typically berated and yelled at pretty badly. Most of them that stuck around the gen pop dorms were honest and just perverts. She was 16 he was 22. That kind of stuff. We had one guy, raped both his daughters from 4 on up. Finally his then 14 year old hit her cell phone and recorded it happening to her younger sister. Spoiler this is graphic. One night I woke up to pee and my neighbor, bedded my feet, we were in rows, pulled me back down. Told me not to go to the bathroom. I'm new to this and don't know any better and brushed it off. Anyways three guys had the Chester pinned down raping him. At this point all I really saw well was blood or crap and then his face. It looked like a sock wrapped around a broomstick shoved sideways in his mouth to keep him quiet. The scary part was the sound. There were 56 men in the storm. There wasn't enough sound to wake up hardly anyone. All this lasted maybe one second and I went back to bed. I didn't sleep that night or the next at all. That man spent the rest of the time I had there with his head down, or swinging wildly at anyone who even looked at him wrong. The worst part is almost everyone acted like it was normal, and I didn't do a damn thing about it. I went with the flow. I lived in the same large, gymnasium sized, room for 5 months with him and could never look at him knowing I didn't help. Prison is hell. People act like it's what they deserve. If our government's elect spent one week in a prison we would see reform so fast. I only made it because I was smart. A few well respected people basically said this guy's not coming back, don't mess with him, and I would build a tattoo gun or a radio, steal from work, guards never looked twice at me, I still got stabbed, got beaten and had to hurt a few people. For anyone wondering I crashed going 14 miles per hour over the limit, 74 in a 60, my best friend didn't have a seat belt on and flew out when we flipped. I doubt I'll ever be normal and can hardly live with myself some days. I admitted that the EMT to drinking 4 hours prior to the crash. I thought my legs were broken and wanted to be honest before I got pumped full of meds. Even though I knew I was okay to drive and the blood work came back negative, a cop had me saying it on video and I got charged with manslaughter. Apparently screaming sorry at the top of my lungs at my dead friend's body, looked bad too, according to my lawyer, and made me look guilty. I signed a plea. Ex of mine went to prison in Brazil. Said an offender came in after he was processed. Both the inmates and the guards dressed him in a dress, wig, put lipstick on him, put out cigarettes on him, and beat the crap out of him. Didn't know if he made it or not. Most Chesters I encountered in jails and prisons were older, white guys. There were a few there for sexual relations with girls who were 15 when they were 18, and they are generally left alone as it is a situation many people might find themselves in as an 18-year-old kid. Older dudes do not get that leeway though. They are beaten, extorted, robbed raped themselves, or killed by the alpha inmates. They really didn't like to kill the guys at the camp I was on as they are, like I said, older white guys. They typically have money on their books and go to commissary every week. They are an endless source of hygiene products and snacks. I've seen a line of inmates outside of a Chester's cell door with a list of items they each want him to order. For his sake, he better hope he's got the money on his books to satisfy all their wants. If he doesn't, it never ended well for him. At a county jail I was in in Northern Virginia 1997 they would bring food carts up to each block with the appropriate number of trays and drinks for each inmate to receive one meal. It wasn't exclusive to Chester's but if you saw a guy grab two trays back to back through the food slot, you knew someone either A, wasn't going to eat because of their crime or B, they were put on a diet because whoever grabbed two trays thought that person was trash. Normally though, they would announce to the rest of the block whose tray they were taking to alleviate any potential confusion in case one of their boys was the guy going without. Funny part is, most people didn't even eat the food. They waited until everyone had access to their boxes, we were locked out of our cells in the dairy every morning at 7.30, and made burritos, ramen, chips, meat, cheese etc., for dinner. Correctional officers know what's going on, they don't really seem to care though. 
I guess overall they get it the worst. A lot of guys are there to do their time and go home or do their time as drama free as possible. All bets are off though when it comes to Chester's. I kind of felt bad for them to be honest. What makes him so much worse than me? Sure, I didn't molest kids but what makes their crimes of murder, armed robbery and rape any less life changing or traumatic for their victims? I did see a Chester beat the absolute dog crap out of two guys in his cell one night though. That was pretty rad. Dude was like 26, girl lied and said she was 19, 15, and he got some time. He ended up throwing one of them off the tier onto a table in the dare room. I never root for sex offenders per se, but that was awesome. This is from one specific maximum security federal prison. There are so many different types of jails and prisons with varying levels of security and huge variables in population type. Obviously what I experience doesn't mean that every single other jail and prison is like this. When you first get there, your counselor will ask you if there's any reason that you can't walk the yard or be in general population. This is usually where you make the decision to do your time in the SHU all alone, or take your chances out with everyone else. You do need to have a good reason though, child molester, gang issues, there's a hit on you from the last place you stayed, you're a snitch etc. When you get settled in, the shot caller from your race will approach you. You're told something like this, you have one week to get us your paperwork so we can make sure you're not a trauma or have no rule 35s. If you don't provide this in a week, we'll kill you. Here's a toothbrush, some snacks, some soap, let me know if you need anything. Chamo equals child molester. Rule 35 equals reduced sentence for snitching on someone. So, you show them your paperwork, and if you're clean you're good to go. If you don't show paperwork, or you're not clean, you will be killed within the next week. For some reason, new guys do not take this seriously. They either don't produce their paperwork, or they actually produce it knowing that there's less than desirable stuff on there. What happens to them? Stabbed 27 times all in a matter of seconds. Face and head stomped on so hard until it just cracks open and gunk leaks out. Mouth and jaw shattered with a pool stick or pool ball. Two guys killed in about 60 seconds by a tiny Mexican holding just a bocce ball. Native Americans pretend like it's all good, 10 of them go into the sweat lodge for religious reasons, only 9 come out. 10th guy had a clean gash in his head from a shovel. Cellmate hung the guy with a bedsheet to make it look like suicide. Why do these guys take chances with trying to be in general population? Because the SHU sucks. You are by yourself, no TV, 3 showers a week, no access to things like the prison barber, limited access to phones, video visitations, constant video monitoring to prevent suicide. And every 18 months they ship you to a new prison. If you're looking at 40 years for child rape, that can be a long time to live in those conditions. Sometimes guys will stay in general population knowing that they will get killed, simply because they don't want to be there but can't commit suicide in the SHU. I work in a medium security state prison, and the short answer is nothing. Most COs are not allowed access to inmate records and the ones who are don't usually spread it for fear of doing the paperwork involved with a stabbing. In our facility, inmates who act properly get a room to themselves and this is by far the biggest deterrent to any misbehaving. Also the saying here is in prison you can be whoever you want. Many openly lie for fear of retaliation. In the rare case where the info gets out they will be shunned by groups they don't really affiliate with anyhow. They most often find a level of acceptance with the many many religious groups inside. Also in my facility, rape is almost unheard of. The sex there is almost entirely consensual, to the point of evenly distributing the punks amongst the blocks. I did 6 months in current from hold correctional facility. Didn't even make it to Gen Pop before two huge guys from the same street found out that some Asian dude was in for touching his knees. This guy, my god, they approached him at lunch and snatched away his tray first. The bigger of the two slapped him so hard, it almost hurt me while screaming, so you like to hurt little girls? Followed up by the man who took the tray hitting this little Asian guy with a straight up sucker punch that laid him out flat. After that I'm pretty sure every inmate on C block stopped his head. COs had pepper spray flying everywhere and when all was said and done, the pedo was taken to the hospital and the rest of us didn't get dinner because we were locked down for 24 hours. That was only quarantine. The whole thing could have been avoided if there wasn't a giant whiteboard with everyone's name, inmate number, and charges written all over it. I've been in a few times and it's never good. I've seen guys beat near to death, choke out the shampoo bottles shove in their butts. I have seen them kept on the block for days to be starved and extorted, and I also work in the kitchen where when the tray is for protective custody. 
we and the guards are made to spit on them, through the the stuff on the floor, pretty much anything you can imagine. A few places weren't as harsh because it was short timers who weren't gonna risk too much, but the high the security the worse they get it, but nowadays they pretty much get their own prison so they aren't assaulted and killed. Thanks for listening to Radio TTS. Subscribe and like if you enjoy disturbing and dark videos. We do also have some happy dandy duty content.